What is an emulator? Well, generally an emulator is software on one device which is made to emulate a completely separate computing system. Within that device, for example, you might have a Windows computer and you want to run something on iOS. You can do this by emulation. But today we're going to focus on video game systems. It's a great way of giving you a chance to play a game or system that you would otherwise not be able to. For example, Nintendo Entertainment System. The NES has become very much a rare collector's item, and the games that come with it are also rather pricey. So maybe you don't have the time or the space or the money to spare to collect for that video game system. So is emulation piracy? Well, there's a couple different ways to look at it, and I don't want to get stuck on this topic, so here's a quick answer. When you go to your local used video game store, and you find some PS2 games that are used that cost a couple bucks, so you pick them up. Do you think that any of the money that you have spent on those used video games goes to the publisher, developer, or companies that put the game out originally? No, of course not. The games are used. The money that you spend just goes to the used video game store. And do continue to buy stuff from those stores because those are awesome and they need to continue to exist. But, just saying, those used games are so outdated, um, they're no longer the current release, so it really doesn't matter anymore. Do some of them have copyright? Yes, because there are still companies that technically own them. They own the rights to them. But generally, I think it's fine for the public to be sharing these games, uh, sharing the ISOs, sharing the ROMs. There is nothing wrong with that, and you should not feel guilty at all about emulating a video game system and playing a game that you downloaded from the internet. And you can look at it this way. I no longer have a Sega Genesis, so I can't play many of the games that I grew up with. The same can be said for the original PlayStation, I no longer have that either. But I can recreate the collections of games that I used to have and relive those nostalgic moments. And that's kind of what I see the main purpose of emulators as being. And I really can't find anything wrong with that. Of course you can make up your own mind on that, but let's go ahead and talk about which emulators are out. So I'm going to show you my emulator collection that I have on my computer. All of these are downloaded free, by the way. So it's available for everyone and you can of course get emulators over different operating systems. I'm running Windows 7, but it really doesn't matter. You can get them for your phone, for your Android, for whatever it is. So currently these are the emulators that I use. Well, I have this Atari Jaguar one, but let's not talk about that because it's actually terrible. And you'll see like varying degrees of accuracy and not all emulators are perfect, but we'll get to that shortly. So first off, Nintendo DS is Desume. GameCube is Dolphin that can also emulate the Wii. Nintendo 64 is Project 64. NES is My NES. PlayStation is PCSXR. PlayStation 2 is PCSX2. Sega Genesis is Fusion and Super Nintendo is SNES 9X. So these are the ones that I use personally and there is a wide range of emulators out there each that you'll find have varying results. But before we get to that all of these can be downloaded online and once you've chosen a selected emulator you need to go and download ROMs or ISOs off the games that you want to play. ROMs are representative of cartridges and ISOs are representative of DVD discs or CD discs. So very quickly, the sites that I use most of all are muparadise.com and coolrom.com. Those are some really great sites that have a variety, a wide variety of both ISOs and ROMs for all the systems. Um, they even give you some recommendations on emulators and I think MU Paradise actually lets you download or at least links you to where you can download them. So on the final topic I do want to say that while emulators are not the actual systems, well isn't that obvious, but 
What I mean by that is the, uh, well, 2D games can be emulated, like, one for one. I haven't ever seen a 2D game that has not been one for one emulated. It's as perfect as it is on the game console. It's when we get to, like, 3D game systems that it can be inaccurate and have some flaws and some other issues. For example, with my PlayStation 1 emulator, I have the issue that uh, some games do not detect the virtual memory card. Obviously, no memory card is there, but it's being emulated by the emulator. So, um, some games don't pick that up. For example, games like Crash Bandicoot and Spyro do find my virtual memory card and can save on the virtual system, but other games like Street Fighter will spend the whole day checking where's my memory card, they can't find it. And I'm not sure why that is. There's also other things like not every game that I've tried will run, like Metal Gear Solid, I can't get that one to run. But on those early systems like Nintendo 64 and PlayStation 1, when you do get a game to run, it usually will run at 100% perfect, 100% um, like full frame, 60 frames per second. It's when you start getting to like the PlayStation 2 and GameCube era of emulators, does it start to have bigger problems. In that, sometimes you won't be able to hold a steady frame rate or play the game smoothly because of that. And I have an example of this, I was trying to play Burnout, which is one of the games that I actually do still own the copy of. All of my PS2 games are upstairs in the attic, unfortunately. <coughs> Excuse me, and I do plan to get them out of there sometime. So as you can see on my recording of Burnout, the gameplay is really slowed down to what the game actually should be running at. And on the top of the screen there is a percentage meter and usually that should be 100% or rather that you want it to stay at 100%. But what was happening is it was dropping down, usually dropping down on the PlayStation 2 emulator by 5-10% to 10 and that's the best that I've gotten my PlayStation emulator to run at. It used to be a lot worse, trust me. But the footage that you're seeing now is deceptive. The reason is because when I was trying to record, it dropped down another 20%. You see on the recording it was running at 70-ish percent, but as soon as I turned off the recording and went back to just playing the game, it usually holds about 95 to 95 to 90 or something around those numbers. So it's not too bad and it is completely playable. But it's still not a perfect emulation yet. So you might run into issues like that and you think, well, I, I don't want that. Well, there is a lot of settings that you can play with. You can switch out things like BIOS and plugins. You can change around which graphic card you're utilizing. There's a lot of things that you can do to help you get your emulator to run the way that you want it. And for that, you're going to have to Google some of your problems and find someone else with the same problems, read a bunch of forums. But it's not too hard to do. There are things you can do, although don't expect with these more intensive systems like the PlayStation 2 and GameCube that you'll be able to run them at a 100% accuracy rating. At least not yet. I'm sure there will be a time that you can. So with that said, that's basically it, guys. If you are curious about emulators, hopefully this video helped. Uh, thanks for watching, see you next time, and have fun playing whatever emulator that you choose to play.